Marcus. Uh, when I do retro game remixes, I go by the name Mackey, uh, and I thought I'd give you a tour of uh, one of my uh, uh, arrangements, uh, the Thriller-inspired Ghosts and Goblins remix that I did a couple of years ago. Hope you'll enjoy it. So I want to start the tour by showing you uh, where I actually started on this, and that was to uh, recreate the sound of Thriller. <clears throat> and this was really because I was interested in this uh, this crescendo at the beginning of of Thriller. I was uh, I, I it just sounds so cool and immense, and the build, whole build up is so cool. Oh, let me play you that from the start. Um, so I wanted to understand how that was built up and 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 what the sounds were and 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 the chords and stuff like that. So I, it all started out with this. Those with a keen ear will hear that I've forgotten the cowbell that's supposed to go. So that's where it started. I, I, I wanted to understand how that was built up and, and then uh, I got a bit uh, carried away and started looking for the exact right sounds or well exact stuff that sounded reasonably similar. Um, so um, so what I, I started out with these and then I got sort of, oh, I, I, I want to recreate that bass line as well because that it sounds so cool and it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, um, what I did was the thing with a lot of Michael Jackson tracks from this uh, this era, um, especially Thriller and 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 Bad, is that most sounds uh, that sound really fat and and uh, 
they're actually made up of several sounds. And I know that Anthony Marinelli, he's started to uh, put up clips on, on YouTube uh, where, uh, where he shows how things were done. Anthony Marinelli uh, was a synth technician or whatever you want to call it, a synth expert, synth clavier guy uh, who helped Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson out with a lot of synth arrangements and sampling and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, though, but his clips are actually... I think he started publishing them after I made this track, so I did not use that for inspiration. So I, I had to try and, and mesh different sounds together. Um, so, you know, I, I, I listened to the Michael Jackson track a lot, and then I, I started to, in my brain, dissect the bass sound. What What is it? And, and I came up with this combination of sounds that I had here. Um, so the first one is this. And the second one is this. And then a third sound that's this. And then, of course, I did some um, EQing on it and I um, <clears throat> put some chorus on this one. We can take a look at it. Let's see what sound that is to begin with. I'm a bit of a. a um, a preset surfer so and i really like synth one um so okay now that one's was this sound uh, uh, sometimes i use synth one library librarian uh but it's a little bit slow so nor usually i just use the regular synth one plugin um, but i think there's some chorus effect on this as well where is it there Let's turn that off. So that's the original sound. And then I put some chorus on it. That is one of the things that Anthony Marinelli actually talks about. How to juice a bass sound up and, and he likes to use chorus. So I, I figured that one out myself uh, <laughs> on these. And then all of these are put on a bass bus over here where I've added some fat channel uh that's actually just a compressor i think or is there an equalizer as well oh yeah there's some um, you can turn it into a stack so this is what i put on it uh, afterwards to get that trailery sound and there's really no secret to this it's meticulous and tedious work just listening and, and looking for sound especially if you're like me you're, you're you're not good at creating the sounds yourself i'm just good at hearing whatever seems to be correct uh so um that is tedious work to just go through plugins and and try to um tr try to get the right sound out of it and I think there are a lot of clips on YouTube where people try to recreate classic sounds. And to me, most of them are not even close. I mean, they sound like someone who's tried and failed to create a, a similar sound um, to what uh, what the original was. But I personally, I, I usually hear that, nah, this is not. 100% correct. It, and it doesn't have to be 100% correct, but it has to be at least 90 or 95% correct. So I want to also show you the the drum sounds um, because um, Michael Jackson tracks are are always about the rhythm and and the groove. Uh, he, he was a genius when it came to rhythmic rhythmic elements. Um, ah, well, he was a genius in most most uh, respects, at least when it came to music. Let's not go into the other areas. Um, so, uh, well, it says Lindrum here. Let's take a look at this. Um, what, what drums I have here. But I think it's actually only the the um, uh, bass drum that's Lindrum. Actually, says Lindrum on these as well. So maybe I'm not right there. There are some hi hats and a couple of claps. And then. Uh, they're uh, given uh, channels of their own, and, and I have some reverbs on there. Oh yeah, don't forget the conga stuff. Uh, 
And once again, getting these things right is is all about tedious work. So um, um, I have quite an extensive library of um, of um, drum samples. So I think um, if, if I can find the right sound, I usually use uh, the samples from Mars uh, library. Um, they they give they have great sales on bundles, uh, and and they are, really have good recordings of of uh, classic drum machines. So I probably used um, one of these uh, kits for this. I don't remember exactly. Um, So in this case, I, I I knew that it was a Lindrum that they had used at least for for some of it. I don't think uh, the hi hats are a Lindrum, and when you don't know what it is, then it's tedious work uh, because then you open up your extensive library of drum machines, and then what you do is 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 this. until you find the right sound. <laughs> so that's the secret behind behind recreating uh, drum sounds. It's having a, a big old library of samples and, um, and just trying to find the right one. And I do recommend the, uh, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Samples from Mars, I'm just a happy customer and they do give uh, good sales every once in a while, a couple of times a year at least for their bundles and I do recommend you get them. It's, they are great sounding libraries. Right, um, I want to talk a little bit about the baseline before we go back into the th uh, my um, uh, Ghosts and Goblins remix, because I've had comments that people say it's too much, uh, it's uh, too much thriller. You've just copied it. Um, the baseline is ripped right off. It is not. Uh, there are differences, and so to clear my name, <laughs> I've uh, I've put these uh, two. Uh, baseline. So the first baseline here is the um, um, uh, the Thriller baseline, and the second one here is from uh, Ghosts and Goblins. And I've transposed the uh, the uh, Ghosts and Goblins um, uh, baseline uh, to to put it in the same key. I think this is B, yeah, and I think this was in G sharp uh, from the beginning. But now you you can just to once and for all prove that I did not just copy the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, thriller baseline I, I actually based the baseline on um, on the ghost and goblins uh, because putting the thriller baseline in in ghost and goblins would sound wrong so this is thriller. As you can clearly hear, they're not exactly the same. They're very similar, but they're not the same. So uh, everything in my Ghosts and Goblins remix is uh, rhythmically thriller, but melodically and harmonically, it's all based on Ghosts and Goblins. So let's switch over here now. And those with a keen eye once again uh, will notice that I misspelled Ghosts and Goblins here, which actually is a problem for me when I try to find this track again in my library because I keep writing Ghost and nothing turns up. Anyway, a, bit, a little bit of a typo. Let's let's start with the, uh, listening to the intro here uh, because Michael Jackson's Thriller has this spooky um, um, intro with a lot of sound effects and, and um, this booming voice that tells you the story of the creatures of the night or something like that. So I had to try to create something uh, similar and it starts off with a little bit of a squeaky scary door, wolf's house, and then there's this wind effect which is uh, a synth one preset that I used, and I recorded several different versions or variants of it, and then I pieced together what worked well with the track. So there's the intro, all isolated. Um, 
Of course, then there's the the matter of the intro, and and once again, this sounds very similar to to what's uh, what's on Thriller, but it's all the um, it's all Ghost and Goblins chords. This one on a separate track because this is actually uh, another. Uh, th these are the same sounds, um, this one and this one. But this one uh, has a longer release because in the Michael Jackson track, the the final stab keeps ringing into the first verse, <clears throat> and I saw that by having a longer release on this one. Um, Okay, so the neighbor's kids are making a racket upstairs. I hope you don't hear that. Uh, talking a little bit more about the drums here, because there's one drum sound that actually just shows up once in uh, in the entire track, I think. Or maybe twice in the original three, but only once in this, and that's this one. <laughs> that took me quite a while to find the right uh, right sound for that. I think maybe um, that was re uh, recorded with a live drummer in, in the studio when they recorded Thriller. But uh, yeah, I, I had to search a lot to, to get the right feel for that. Because that, that sound is not used anywhere else in the track. So I talked a little bit about the drums, but we can we can take a little closer look on on how they're uh, set up. So I normally uh, always just use the uh, the impact plugin that comes with uh, with Studio One. And the drums, size so the drums here. So um, what have I done with the drums? So there's just a cowbell on that. And uh, all of it's going to the crash reverb. So I set a reverb up for, for the crash. And apparently I used that for all of the drums. This is just to give it a little bit of space. If I turn it off. Oh, there's actually... Oh, I'm, I'm doing it on the wrong track. This one actually doesn't have... Um, it, it has a, a reverb of its own. It doesn't use the other one. So this is just a drum room in a lexicon reverb, just to make it a little bit, because it's very stiff like that. That gives it a little more of a, a live feel. So that's what I've used on that. And uh, then I usually throw a bit of fat channel on there just to see how that affects the sound and, and try to fatten it up a bit. Um, what about the, what's on this? That's probably something that's scroll free occasionally. Here's the snare drum. It's also a lexicon reverb on there. Wide open eyes. Well now that's done, now that the singing has started, we can actually start looking at the what I've done with the vocals here. And normally I record vocals in a different. Um, uh, normally I, I I bounce the track to just a, a master file and then I put that into a different uh, different arrangement um, or you know a new song in in uh, Studio One and then I record vocals. Usually I do about four or five takes of each verse and and chorus and stuff like that and then I piece together uh, the the. The takes that that sounded the best. Um, I never use auto uh, auto tune, uh, mainly because I don't know how to use it. <laughs> it's like either I can sing it or I can't, so uh, I never use auto tune, which you might pick up sometimes uh, when I sing. I, I'm, I I don't consider myself to be a great singer. Uh, I I can put down uh, some good vocals, sure, but it's very much down to down to um, the my my form of the day it's close to midnight and Astaroth is lurking in the dark 
Under the moonlight, bats and ogres wants to tear you apart. On computer screens, goblins try to catch you before you make it. If you even sneeze. Now that that there was a happy accident uh, that I actually sang it like sneeze. And then the, uh, I think it's a dub reverb, uh, dub delay on this. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's a towel dub too. Um, then it kept ringing and it actually sounded like a sneeze. sneeze. Something's gonna hit you between the eyes. Cause ghosts and goblins in the night are trying to stop you from reaching the top. Ghosts and goblins Normally, when I um, do tracks on my own, I actually don't do that much EQing on um, on the vocals. But this time, since I had to make it fit into uh, this really thriller-sounding uh, arrangement, there's a lot of EQing going on. So let's first take a look at the... Um, uh, individual tracks. Uh, there's not a lot of EQing going on on the tracks themselves. Actually, it's just the uh, the, the delay on the in this even separate effects channel. Uh, but I think on the bus there's a lot going on. Yeah, look at that. So there's first some pro uh, um, pro EQ. Then there's a channel strip boosting some of the uh, the frequencies a little bit more. Then there's another. Um, I really like this one. This is a good sounding um, uh, EQ to just make, mainly for mastering or putting on on vocals or, or um, if you if you make uh, as I've done um, with a bass combined bass tracks and stuff like that. Then this is I really like the sound of this slick EQ. And now where was I? Yeah, then I've put some actually some fat channel on it. Uh, with more compression, and then there's actually uh, even more compression on there. Um, so the thing is, I don't know what I'm doing. I've been getting away with things for 20 years. I have absolutely no clue what I do. I just throw stuff on there, and what sounds good sounds good, and I don't know why. Uh, and that's how I work. So. Um, uh, I, I I get asked a lot, but how did you do that? What did you think? And how did you? How did you? And I just I had absolutely no clue. I just kept throwing logs on the fire, and all of a sudden I had a great barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know I uh, so I I absolutely I don't know. I just try things out, um, and so that's uh, my tip would be find some plugins that you think sound really good. And then you try to combine them in different ways and, and ha have some go-to uh, plugins and presets and, and just try your way out. That's, that's the way I do it. Always have done and probably always will because I do not have the energy to sit down and, and, uh, and study these things. I know some people are really good. Uh, at like analyzing frequencies and and I do I do look at spectrum um, spect spectrometers I think they're called right um, uh, just if if uh, just to get a general feel of okay where are maybe there's this is too bass heavy uh, I might not he actually hear it in my in my headphones but if I play it somewhere else it's gonna be just too boomy bass so I use it to mainly control the bass frequencies actually. Right, so uh, that's that. Is there anything else I thought I would? Oh yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about. I mean, my, I said that Michael Jackson usually combines a lot of sounds, um, like like for example for the bass sound, and actually a lot of the drum sounds that he uses as well is is actually a couple of different samples. One that provides bottom uh, for a, for a kick drum, for example, and one that provides a punch, um, and and. In, in this, um, this section, this organ lead is actually three different sounds. So we have this really high pitched, this is a synth one sound, and then there's a farfitza, but I think it's a. Um, 
Yes, from an uh, Arturia, Arturia Analog Lab. Um, you get a lot of uh, free stuff with Studio One if you buy it, um, and sometimes they add stuff to the bundle. Um, and, and I use that there, the free stuff a lot that they gave away. And then there's this bell sound. And together they make up this. Which in the... Now you may ask yourself, well, what's that? What's that high-pitched, um, this pling lead? You'll have to excuse me. I com I, I com when doing music, I, I switch between Swedish and English all the time. Uh, and whatever it says on these, my arrangements are a bit, bit messy. So whatever it says on this is probably not. I mean, it says Moog strings on all of this. I, I probably tried it out uh, with a plugin with a with a Moog sound uh, at some point, and then I moved away from that. So um, you never know what you end up with. So you can never trust whatever it says on this uh, in my arrangement. Anyway, you you might ask yourself, what's what's that high pitch thing doing there? But it's one of those things that you you really notice when it's not there. And you even notice it, 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 I'm not sure what the compression is going to do to the audio here uh, when I upload it, but that really cuts through uh, in the arrangement. You can really hear when it's, when it's not there. Um, right, I'm running out of things to say, I think. We can take a look at these brass sounds, actually. Um, now I don't remember how to play it. Oh yeah. So um, this is another of my go-to plugins, the UVI workstation. It has great sounding. Uh, it, it has an, a library of great sounding um, FM synthet synthesizers um, that I also, I think, got uh, in a bundle with, with Studio One at some point. So, and, and I, there's actually uh, two uh, brass sounds. This one is uh, played an octave lower, I think, than the other one uh, to provide the bottom in these sort of, yeah, these brass stabs. So there's that. And yeah, that, that was actually a little bit, um, this one was a little bit. Um, just a little, I mean, this would have been a completely different track, Final Countdown, if they had played that on a for Fitza instead. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, they, I mean, they, the sound really does, uh, it's important for the vibe uh, of the track. So, um, uh, and, and getting the right sound is, is often meticulous work, and I, I usually iterate over tracks many, many times. Uh, to find the right ones, you might find a drum sound that sounds almost the same, like on the track, and then you just go back to the library and you think, hmm, this one actually sounds a little bit better. And then you put that in and, uh, yeah. And then you go insane after a while. Um, right, I think that's, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you learned something. Um, and if there's something you think I should have shown you or that you wonder how I did, uh, please leave a comment and I'll try to maybe answer that in the comment section on YouTube or, or try to focus on that on in, a, in the later video. Anyway, thanks for watching.